So we're here at the example table, and in this video we're going to be talking about geometric series. So a geometric series is a sum from, say, n equals 0 to infinity of something of the form a times r to the n, where a and r are just any fixed numbers. So this is a plus a times r plus a times r squared plus a times r cubed, and so on. Now, it's always worth reminding you that in general you can't determine the exact value of a series if the series converges. Geometric series are maybe the best example of series where determining the exact value is not only possible, but in fact very easy. All you need to know are a and r. So this thing equals a over 1 minus r, as long as the absolute value of r is strictly less than 1. And if it's greater than or equal to 1, then this does not converge. So if the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1, this series doesn't converge. And yes, I know I wrote this series equals does not converge, but mm, bear with me. This means that this series converges to a over 1 minus r in the case that r is, uh, absolute value of r is less than 1, and it doesn't converge if it's greater than or equal to 1. So let's look at an example. Let's look at the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 7 times one-fifth to the n. Well, by the formula a over 1 minus r, let's identify a and r first. a is 7, and r is the thing being raised to the nth power, so r is one-fifth. So by the formula, this equals 7 over 1 minus one-fifth. So this is 7 over four-fifths, or 35 over 4. Right, and that's about as easy as it can get to determine the exact value of a series. Let's look at another example. Let's look at the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 2 to the n. Now in this case, a, well there is, no, there is nothing here, uh, nothing written anyway, so a is simply 1 and r is negative 2. So this thing does not converge. And let's write out a, uh, an abbreviated version of this. This is, well, 1 n equals 0, this is 1, and then we get minus 2, and then plus 4, minus 8, plus 16, minus 32, plus 64, and so on. So this series keeps jumping back and forth from uh, adding these negative and positive terms that bounce the, bounce the partial sums around. Remember, the partial sums have to converge for the series to converge. And since we're adding and subtracting these larger and larger numbers, those partial sums never converge. Let's look at one more example. Let's look at the sum from n equals 3 to infinity of, say, 5 times 1 eighth to the n. Well, what's different here? Now we're starting at n equals 3. Should that change convergence to divergence or divergence to convergence? Well, no. All we're doing, if you think of, if you think of this series with n equals 0 instead, all we're doing to go from n equals 0 to n equals 3 is, getting, is, is we're getting rid of the first three terms, right? We're getting rid of n equals 0, 1, and 2. We're getting rid of those, those three terms. And getting rid of the first three terms isn't going to make a convergent series diverge or a divergent series converge. The convergence or divergence of this thing is still dependent only on r. And r here is 1 over 8, right? This is the thing being raised to the nth power. This has absolute value less than 1, so this series converges. But 
we can't blindly apply the formula anymore that says that a series like this with, the, with an appropriate r is equal to a over 1 minus r because we're starting at n equals 3. Now there are different ways to correct for this so we can use the formula. I'll illustrate one in this example. So if we want this thing, if we, if we want to apply the formula and we want to start with n equals 0, let's just start with n equals 0 and go to infinity. 5 times 1 over 8, but now to what power? When we start with n equals 3, 1 over 8 is being raised to the nth power. Remember, we, we need these two series to be the same. So if we subtract 3 from n as the, low, as this, uh, the lower number here, start, subtract 3 from this to get 0, we need to add 3 to every n in this expression. So when n equals 3, this is the first term in this series, we get 5 times 1 eighth to the third power. And now if we start with n equals 0, the first term in this series is 5 times 1 eighth to the 0 plus 3, or again 5 times 1 eighth to the third power. So these two series are the same, but now we start with the correct index. Of course, now we have a different problem because r is no longer being raised simply to the nth power, it's being raised to the n plus third power. We can also correct for this because we can rewrite this series as the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 5, the 5 is just along for the ride, times 1 eighth cubed, we'll take this 3 off and consider it separately, times 1 eighth to the nth power. 1 eighth cubed times 1 eighth to the nth power, same as 1 eighth to the n plus third power, but now we have our correct value for a and times r to the nth power. Now we can apply the formula so we get 5 times 1 over 8 cubed, this is a, all over 1 minus r, which we knew right from the beginning is going to be 1 over 8.